Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about something that clone builders of military firearms like the Mark 12 SPR special purpose rifle will rejoice over because there's a certain component to the rifle that you're looking at right now that's been hard to get in the past. But now that product is going to be a little bit more accessible. So clone builders of the Mark 12 will be able to go ahead and build those clones. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, real quick, there's a link to Patreon down in the video description. Also, if you like the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. With that being said, let's get started with today's video talking about the AEM-5 suppressor. So this is a BCM Mark 12 clone. And the original Mark 12 was developed right here in Indiana by Crane Naval Warfare Center, and it was intended for special operations use initially, but later it would trickle down into being used by the Marine Corps uh, and perhaps other non-special operations units out there. But originally it was conceived by the Navy to be used by Navy SEALs, their special operations group, and then also the U.S. Army would use the weapon system in their special operations community as well. So initially it was conceived to bridge that gap between the M4 service rifle and the SR-25, and it would be basically accurate out to seven, 800 meters. And that's something that the standard M4 carbine just wasn't well suited for with its 14 and a half inch barrel. So let's kind of talk about the original design that I have here, starting from the rear of the, the upper assembly and moving our way forward towards the AEM-5 suppressor that's on here. So back here we have standard A2 upper, and on top you'll see a folding rear sight that won't pop up because I have a scope on it. But this folding rear sight is part of the swan sleeve that runs the full length of the upper receiver going out over the PRI handguard that we have. Coming forward, we do have that PRI handguard. Later, this will be replaced by a CAC rail system and later versions of this weapon system. But this will be correct for the early PRI handguards that were used on the early guns. And so this is a, a free float handguard. It's very lightweight, carbon fiber, I believe. And then out front, we have a updated gas block that has a folding front sight in it. So we have the arms rear sight on the sleeve in the rear, and then we have this folding front sight up here. So you'd have iron sights in an emergency situation. And then out here we have the AEM-5 suppressor, which is an over the barrel design. And this is why we're out here today. To talk about the silencer. And this silencer is something that the clone builders have desperately wanted to get their hands on, but they've been very hard to find and can get very expensive when you do find them. But back to the barrel, the original rifle would have an 18 inch one and seven twist Douglas barrel that's free floated. This BCM has a one and eight barrel in it that's not a Douglas. Then you have a collar back here that the rear of the can butts up against. Out here you have threads and on that you would have a thread protector, which I actually think I have the thread protector in my pocket here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it really quick. And the thread protector would go on to protect that thread when you didn't have the suppressor in place. Also incorporated into the muzzle device is a muzzle brake system. So as I mentioned, the can slides down over the barrel and this was done, this was kind of popular at the time period that this can was developed. Uh, the concept was that you could put some of the volume of the can over the barrel, therefore shortening the overall length versus putting it out here on the end of the barrel, making the weapon system you know, several inches longer. So that was the original concept. So let's talk about the AEM-5 next and obviously going with the clone build for the Mark 12s and then talk about the status of this particular can and then what is replacing it on the US civilian market for those clone builders out there that might be wanting to build a Mark 12 of their own. All right, so now I have a PRI rifle that every once in a while you'll find to come into Copper Custom. This one I did pick up from Copper. And this is a complete PRI build of an early Mark 12. You'll notice it has an A2 stock on it, which most people would associate with the Mark 12, at least the early versions of the gun. So in front of me, I have two silencers. This is the AEM-5, and this is the Otter Creek Labs OCM-5. This is a very early AEM-5. When you would want to purchase one of these, you would have to go to Ron Allen Engineering or Allen Engineering and get on a list, and then when they did a production run, you'd be notified when your can was going into production, you could pay for it and then transfer it to your FFL, SOT, and you, know, you guys know the rest. So this is a very early version of that can. They became harder and harder to get, 
and Allen Engineering would go longer intervals between production runs of the can because at this point he was just trying to feed the market when he had extra machine time with silencers to build clones like this PRI that I have here. So ultimately he wanted to get out of that business and that's where Otter Creek comes in. They worked together and Otter Creek Labs produced this silencer that you see here, which is the OCM5. And the OCM5 is a newer version of this. This one actually incorporates titanium in it. The original AEM5 uh, tips the scales right at 21.4 ounces, I believe, and the Otter Creek tips the scales with its titanium at 16.8 ounces. So there's a significant weight advantage with the Otter Creek Labs silencer. And also the Otter Creek comes in this nice little hard case when you pick them up. Now this one is serial number 14. They just went into serial production with these things and Copper has ser several of them in stock. I came into the shop one day, noticed they were there and picked one up to do this video because I've always been interested in the Mark 12. And we'll talk more about the Mark 12 in the next segment and the accuracy that you can typically, typically expect out of the rifles. So the good news is now you have the Otter Creek lab suppressors coming into the marketplace. They have the knurling on them out here that assists in putting the, the suppressor and take on the, the rifle and taking it off the rifle. You'll notice my early AEM-5 is just slab side smooth, no knurling on it whatsoever. So these things are now out there, they're now available. And so clone builders out there of the Mark 12 can rejoice because these things retail right around 809 bucks. That's what Copper has them for. So that's a far cry from the $2,000 plus dollars you'll see the original AEM5 AEM selling for. And you can get them in titanium, so that makes them lighter. And you'll also notice that the Outer Creek Labs suppressor is just a scotch shorter than the AEM5. If you guys haven't checked out Primary Arms online, please swing by and check out their website. They have all sorts of inventory uh, that ranges from firearms to accessories, really good prices, fast shipping, outstanding customer support. If you use the code MACMAC and you purchase a PA branded optic or red dot sight with a magnified optic, you'll get a free scope mount with that MAC code. Or if you pick up a red dot sight or a prism sight, you'll get a free kill flash anti-reflective de device. So please check out primaryarms.com. So when you're looking at building a Mark 12, if you use original military components, don't expect the greatest results if you're using just regular over-the-counter match ammunition. The rifles were developed and then an ammunition load from Black Hills was developed for the rifle to kind of maximize the accuracy potential of the gun. And that would be, become the Mark 262, which uses a 77 grain Sierra Match King bullet loaded by Black Hills Ammunition Company. You can buy various flavors of 70 grain ammunition. Uh, we have some Norma here. We have some PMC and then some 60, the Norma and the PMC are 77 grain. And then we have some 69 grain um, Federal over here that we've done some shooting with this afternoon to kind of give you an idea out of a, cup, a couple of different rifles of what you can expect typically with a Mark 12. Now, the one you're looking at right now is again, a PRI build. This is a PRI lower, a PRI upper. And it's going to, once again, closely simulate the uh, look and feel and function of an early Mark 12. On top of it, I have an Arc and Optics. This is the SH4, and this one is four to 16 by 50 millimeter. This scope retails for right around 400 bucks. And so we're gonna talk more about this scope in another video, but I wanted to show it to you guys in this video and show you what you can get out there for well less than a thousand dollars and still be able to do some precision shooting with fairly good glass. So again, more on the Arc and Optic later in another video. So we have the Arc and Optic on here and we have in this particular build, the proper one and seven twist barrel. This is a Douglas barrel. And on the end, we have the Ops Inc. muzzle device, which I didn't name when we first started talking about it. So this is the Otter Creek OCM5 suppressor. I'm gonna put it on. It slides over the barrel. It threads up here in the barrel. And it'll take a few twists of the old wrist here to get that fully seated, but it's gonna butt up against this collar in the rear. And then you're just gonna to wanna to snug tighten it. Don't really crank on it because then you're gonna have a hard time getting it off once carbon starts to build up on it. it has a taper to it here, and that should keep the suppressor from walking loose with use, which is 
critical. A lot of direct thread cans will walk off as you start to shoot them and then your accuracy goes absolutely crazy if that should happen, if they come just a little bit loose on precision rifles. So now you can see what a proper early Mark 12 would look like. There are adapters, I believe, available for these, the Otter Creeks, that would allow you to use it with a standard end of barrel thread that screws into the suppressor and would screw onto the end of your thread. So if you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to order the bits and pieces and you want to get your can and you want to do some shooting with it before you get some other pieces to put the actual Mark 12 together, you have that option. Or if you have this can and you don't want to buy another can, you want to use it on different rifles, there are adapters from Otter Creek for this setup. All right, so with accuracy, typically speaking with Mark 12s and commercial grade ammunition, not using the Mark 262 ammunition, it's about a minute gun. It's not a super accurate rifle. 223, in my experience, just has its issues with accuracy. And so, ah, here they are. I'm gonna just give you guys an, a quick example of what are groups you can expect out of a, a Mark 12 using different ammunition. Now this was fired with two different rifles. This was fired with a PRI and with the BCM. And up here we have a first group out of the PRI using some PMC ammunition. Five shot group was nice and tight. Then I started doing three shot groups because I wanted to conserve ammunition. We're still short on match ammo. And this would be the 77 grain stuff. So you can see it'll open up to being over a minute. This was definitely sub minute. Three shot groups start to open up. This was some of the 69 grain federal three shot group, nice and tight. Next three shot group with the federal starts to open up around one minute. Next shot is um, you know more of the federal ammunition. Now we're just a little over a minute. And right here, we're just under a minute. So that's pretty average accuracy for a Mark 12. Again, this one's a different one. This was me running a, a Mark 12 with an end of barrel suppressor, an OSS. And here's a five shot group, nice and tight, sub minute. And then um, this is just a zero target. Here's a three shot group, well over a minute. Another three shot group. And this is with um, the Norma, 77 grain stuff. These groups, a nice tight three shot group. So the accuracy can be a little bit buried, let's say, with the Mark 12. And that's going to be a combination of the design itself and the limitations of the 223 cartridge. I have some of the 77 grain ammunition loaded up here. And let's shoot the rifle with the Arkin SH4 on it and give you guys an idea of what this gun looks like when it's being fired. Now, this has a gas buster type charging handle that kind of wraps around the receiver. It's a little bit larger than your standard A2 charging handle. But you'll notice because this is a baffled can, you will see gas being generated by this weapon. And that was a pretty good group. On a cold bore, these rifles generally do pretty well. The more you shoot them, the warmer they get you start to see that shot dispersion appear. And so if you have the time to go out on a cold day, like today, it's only about 40 some degrees outside, uh, you can shoot this thing, leave the barrel out the window in our case, let it cool off, then shoot another group and you're gonna find you're gonna get your optimal accuracy performance if you do that. In today's video, we're not gonna show you meter data that we collected with the new Otter Creek Labs. We're not gonna compare it to the AEM-5 because the point of this video isn't the decibel reading, it's the fact that you can now get a suppressor to complete your Mark 12 clone build, something that you've not been able to do for several years now for most people. If you guys are interested in us getting some meter readings from this suppressor and others, comment down below. We can always make that video happen. All right, so hopefully you guys are interested in the fact that now the Mark 12 is back and kicking. If you want to put one together, you may do so and still get the correct suppressor if you live in a friendly state that allows them. And they're retailing for right around $800 or a little over. Again, this one comes from Copper Custom. There are other sources out there for the suppressor. This is serial number 14, so they are just, again, getting into production with those silencers. But now is a great time to jump in and pick one up because much like the AEM-5s, when they were available, people procrastinated. Some of my friends I know procrastinated. And then by the time they were ready to purchase, the can wasn't available. So if you're going to pick one up and you want to complete that build, there's no time like the present. Guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel and would like to support us in our effort to continue to bring you content like this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. You'll get early access to videos like this one, and also you have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. There's a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, there's a way to support us 
there's a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.